Imagine you could flip a switch to boost your body's own growth hormone production. No needles required. I'm talking a simple pill that promises enhanced muscle growth, deeper sleep, and faster recovery. Sounds like a good deal, right? Welcome to the seductive allure of MK677, also known as Ibutamorin. But is this tiny molecule a miracle compound or just wellness hype? Today, we're separating the science from gym lore to uncover the truth about one of the most talked about research chemicals on the market. What's up guys, Dr. Alex here, board certified urologist and fellowship trained men's health specialist. Welcome back to the channel where we explore the science behind optimizing male health, performance, and longevity. Today, we're taking a deep dive into a compound that has absolutely exploded in popularity. MK677, also known as Ibutamorin. You've probably seen it hyped up on TikTok and Instagram as a legal way to get steroid-like effects. It's an oral pill, so no scary needles, and it's not technically a SARM or a steroid. This has made it the go-to for a new generation of biohackers and gym goers looking for an edge. I'm looking at you, all you broccoli-haired SARM goblins trying to hide pill bottles from your mom, you little rascals. But what is MK really? How does it work? And what are the risks they're not telling you about in those 30-second clips? We're going to cover all of that. So before we jump into it, do me a favor. Smash the like and subscribe buttons, hit that notification bell so you don't miss our future videos, and answer this critical question in the comments. As somebody who's had to deal with both, what do you think is worse? Dealing with the massive hunger from MK or the massive anxiety that comes with trying to talk to girls with an undiagnosed tism? Let me know. The fate of science depends on it. All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty. What exactly is MK677? Despite being often lumped in with selective androgen receptor modulators or SARMs, MK is a completely different beast. MK677 is a non-peptide, orally acting growth hormone secretagogue. So let's break all those sciencey words down. Non-peptide means it's a small molecule drug, not a fragile chain of amino acids like injectable peptides, like somorolin or ipamorolin. This is why you can get away taking it as a pill. Orally acting means what it sounds like. It can survive the digestive system, and importantly, the first pass metabolism in the liver, which is a huge advantage. And growth hormone secretagogue is the main event here. MK677 tells your pituitary gland to secrete more growth hormone by working through the ghrelin receptor. But how does this exactly happen? And this is what makes MK so unique. MK mimics this hormone ghrelin. Ghrelin is known as the hunger hormone because it stimulates your appetite, but it also plays a crucial role in signaling the release of growth hormone. So after being absorbed into serum, MK677 binds to the ghrelin receptors in the brain, specifically the hypothalamus, not to be confused with the hyperthalamus that made me dependent on Adderall throughout college and med school. This tricks your body into thinking it's received a massive ghrelin signal which prompts a strong pulsatile release of your own natural growth hormone. This in turn leads to a significant and sustained increase in IGF-1, which is the primary driver of the anabolic muscle building effects of GH. Think of it like this. Your pituitary gland is a candy machine full of growth hormone. Normally, ghrelin is your mom. It gives you a single quarter to get a handful of candy each day. MK677, on the other hand, is like your uncle, who gives you multiple quarters for all the candy you can carry. It might seem like an easy choice, but we all know the second option has to have some strings attached to it, and there's a non-zero chance of some of those strings being down in your uncle's basement. Back to MK677. Now this compound didn't just spring out of a UGL basement. MK677 was first developed by Merck and company in the 1990s. Its original purpose was to treat conditions like muscle wasting, osteoporosis, and growth hormone deficiency in the elderly. But Dr. Alex, you say, recombinant growth hormone has been available since the mid 80s. Why wouldn't they just give these patients growth hormone? Well, this is where the story gets interesting. The 1980s and 90s were a time of intense anti-steroid sentiment, mostly because nobody in Congress could bench two plates. I think. This culminated in the Crime Control Act of 1990, which not only scheduled anabolic steroids, but also specifically amended the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act to slap on massive penalties for the distribution of human growth hormone itself for any reason other than treating a recognized disease. That potentially included even the off-label use of growth hormone for things like wellness or anti-aging. So the perceived value of a growth hormone replacement, especially one that avoided the negative connotation associated with needles, was exceedingly high. So Merck went all in on MK677 and the early research was promising. Studies showed it could effectively increase lean body mass and bone density without the need for daily GH injections. Unfortunately, it also showed a tendency for fluid retention, which isn't that great for the elderly or the frail. And by frail, I mean you, and by elderly, I mean your mom. Critically, one key study in elderly patients with hip fractures had to be halted because the group receiving MK677 showed an increased incidence of congestive heart failure, which unfortunately makes sense due to the significant water retention that it can cause. So despite its potential, Merck eventually discontinued the development of MK677. 
After lying dormant for years, the rights to the compound were eventually transferred by virtue of a corporate merger to a company called Lumos Pharma, which is now studying MK under the name LUM201 for rare pediatric growth disorders. But in the shadows, the formula was out and the research chemical market was born. So why is everyone so hyped about MK? Because on paper, the benefits are impressive. The first is increased muscle mass. By boosting GH and IGF-1, MK677 creates a highly anabolic environment. Studies, even the early ones, consistently showed a significant increase in lean body mass and increases of IGF-1 that are consistent with about two, maybe even three IUs of growth hormone a day. Two is improved sleep quality. This is one of the most reported and beloved effects. Users often experience incredibly deep and restful sleep with more vivid dreams. This is because it can increase REM sleep. Better sleep equals better recovery and more growth. Three is enhanced recovery and healing. IGF-1 is critical for repairing tissue, including muscle, bone, and ligament. This makes it attractive for athletes looking to bounce back faster from intense training or injuries. Four is increased bone density, and the original research backs this up. Its potential for long-term benefit for skeletal health is significant. Five is potential nootropic and anti-aging effects. Some users report better skin quality, or glow, because it can improve sleep and IGF-1 levels, which normally decline with age. And as a result, it's often marketed as an anti-aging compound. But now is where we have to have a serious talk about side effects. Nothing in life is free, especially not with a 24-hour boost in growth hormone. The first side, or potential feature, depending how you look at it, is an insane increase in hunger. Remember, this mimics ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone. This isn't just, well, I could eat. This is a ravenous, bottomless pit level of hunger, which makes it very hard to control your diet. This makes it perfect for self-proclaimed hard gainers trying to bulk, but literal hell for anyone bothering to count calories. The next issue is significant water retention. This is a big one in what originally caused Merck to stop clinical development. The increase in GH can lead to holding a lot of water. This can cause bloating, swelling in the hands and feet, known as edema, and a very significant puffy look that masks muscle definition. It also explains the heart failure issue mentioned in the Merck study. You're putting significantly more strain on your cardiovascular system. The third issue is insulin resistance. This is probably the most dangerous side effect besides the increased body water. GH and IGF-1 can decrease your body's sensitivity to insulin. Over time, this can lead to elevated blood sugar levels and potentially increase your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Have I seen a case of diabetes stemming from MK use? No, not yet, but this is not something to take lightly. The fourth issue is lethargy and fatigue. While it may improve sleep at night, some users paradoxically report feeling tired and lethargic during the day, especially during the first few weeks of use. The fifth issue is increased prolactin. In some individuals, MK677 can modestly increase prolactin levels to the upper end of normal. While not usually an issue at standard doses, it might be a concern for those who consider themselves sensitive. Number six is anxiety. There are some anecdotal reports that mention increased feeling of anxiety when taking MK. And the last issue is just unknown long-term risks. This is the elephant in the room. Because MK has never been officially FDA approved for use in healthy humans, we just don't know what the long-term risks of using it might be. Okay, we got it. Hand wringing aside, where does MK677 fit? Its ideal application, without a doubt, is a bulking cycle. If your goal is to put on size and you're a guy or gal who struggles to eat enough calories, MK677 can be a powerful tool. The ferocious appetite suddenly becomes an advantage and the anabolic environment from the GH and IGF-1 boost will help ensure those extra calories go toward building muscle. The water retention is less of a concern when you're not trying to be shredded. But when should you absolutely not use it? In a cutting or a fat loss phase? Trying to use MK while in a caloric deficit is like trying to swim upstream against a tsunami. The intense hunger makes sticking to your diet absolute torture and the water retention will completely hide any fat loss progress you're making, which is psychologically devastating. You'll be bloated, hungry, and miserable. There are far, far better tools for a cutting phase. Also, if you have any history of cardiac disease whatsoever, especially with a reduced ejection fraction, you should avoid MK like the plague. Now let's talk some legalese and discuss the current regulatory status of MK in the United States. And let's be crystal clear, MK677 has not been FDA approved for human consumption. And because it's already been investigated as a drug, it cannot be legally sold as a dietary supplement. So although you used to be able to get it made by compounding pharmacies, it was added to the FDA's do not compound list in 2023, basically shutting down all legal access for human consumable MK in the United States. Yet you can purchase it from various online storefronts, provided it's sold with clear labeling indicated that it's being sold for research purposes only. And no, your latest experiment to hide your feelings in your muscles does not count as research. 
This is a legal gray area that companies use to sell these compounds without getting shut down. Unfortunately, buying it online in this setting also means you're entering into an unregulated market. The product you receive could be underdosed, overdosed, or contain something else entirely. Oh, and MK is banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency, also known as WADA, and all major sporting organizations. If you are a tested athlete, taking this is cheating, so don't even think about it. And although it isn't an androgen, it's still a PED. So if you take it, good for you, but stop claiming you're natty. Literally nobody cares. So time for me to talk about my own experience with MK. I took 25 milligrams a day of ibutamorin as a prescription for about 12 weeks back before it was placed on the do not compound list in 2022, I think. I'm getting old and my memory sucks. And it was pretty wild. As someone who used to be able to turn invisible just by standing sideways, MK finally gave me the appetite I needed to consume enough calories to put on some size. But I was also on other compounds at the time, so it was difficult to say how much of my gains were due to MK. And I had major water retention that negatively affected my cardiovascular health in noticeable ways. I will never forget how me and my wife took a brief vacation to Boulder near the end of my bulk and went to go hike the Flatirons. There are a couple mountains that are famous to Boulder. I had hiked this trail dozens of times without even losing my breath, but for the first time, I could barely even make it out of the parking lot, much less up and down the trail. Oh, and my A1C went all the way up to 5.7, which is technically the pre-diabetic range. Now, it came back down after I quit, but that's still not a good thing. Now, you can make the argument to pair MK with something like metformin, and in retrospect, I probably should have, but hey, I spent enough time meditating on my porcelain throne as is. So yeah, there were definitely some ups and downs with my experience with MK. This isn't creatine. So what's the final verdict on MK677? MK is a powerful, fascinating compound that does exactly what the science says it does. It potently stimulates your body's own production of growth hormone. This can lead to real benefits in muscle gain, sleep, and recovery. But it is not a free lunch. The side effects are significant, with water retention and decreased insulin sensitivity being the most serious risk. The water retention and intense hunger make it a very specific tool, really only suitable for a dedicated bulking phase. And even then, it requires careful management. Now, as a physician who likes keeping his license, I can't and will never recommend the use of a research chemical to anyone. But in the spirit of harm reduction, if you insist on trying it, you must be smart. Monitor your blood sugar, do your cardio, watch your blood pressure, Keep the dose reasonable with most research using anywhere from 10 to 25 milligrams a day and cycle it. Do not use this indefinitely. So if this deep dive cleared up the mystery of MK677 for you, please hit that like button, subscribe for more evidence-based content and ring that notification bell. Drop your questions and experiences in the comments below. I'll be down there and let's have an honest and informed discussion. Until next time, this is Dr. Alex Tatum signing off.